The mind is full of so many things going on, the thoughts crisscrossing one another. This creates impatience and fear in my daily life, causing problems. How do I balance the function of the brain and all that is happening in the mind? Well, the nature of the mind is to be like a monkey. This is why even scripturally we talk about the monkey mind. You know, it's easy for us today to blame it on smartphones and technology and email and busyness of our our lives today. But the truth is that these teachings of dealing with the monkey mind were written before even TV existed, before a telephone existed, forget a smartphone, before any of the things that distract most of us, were even invented. These teachings were given about the monkey mind. So it actually is the nature of the mind to do that. And so what's important is to realize it's not your fault. And don't try to fight it. Because the fighting of it actually creates more problems. Many years ago, my favorite story about this, favorite real-life example about this is many years ago during our International Yoga Festival, which we hold every year in March, I was teaching a meditation in the afternoon, and we have lots and lots and lots of monkeys, literal, real monkeys, (laughs) come from the jungles into the garden, into the ashram, if you've spent even five minutes wandering the bridge or the streets of Rishikesh, inevitably you've seen many of them. But for some reason, there tend to be more of them in the afternoons. For some reason, we've noticed they tend to come down more in the afternoons. So I was teaching a meditation in a tent, and we all had our eyes closed, and we were in the midst of this beautiful meditation. And suddenly you heard, And my eyes were closed, but I started hearing giggles. And so I thought, all right, let me see what it is that's going on. And so I opened my eyes, and from where the fabric of the roof of the tents were overlapping in the design of the tent, you could see monkey hands, arms or legs, whatever they are, coming, coming down through, through the cloth. And naturally, people were giggling. And then then the arm would come up, and then he would bounce a little bit farther, and then you'd see the hand come down someplace else. And because it's just fabric, you could also see the shadows. And so you'd see this shadow jumping, and the fabric would indent, and then the shadow would jump, and the fabric would indent. So I, I guided everybody to keep our eyes closed and to return to our meditation. And... And it actually was, felt to me, quite successful. You could still hear the but we were able to go back to our, our state of meditation. And then about two minutes later, suddenly you heard this bam, bam. And it was the, the guard with a big stick hitting the metal stakes of the tent to scare off the monkeys. So rather than hitting the monkeys, he was hitting the, the poles of the tent to scare them away. A noble endeavor. He was simply trying to be helpful. But once the chokidar, the guard, actually started banging on the poles, there was no way to continue teaching meditation. It was no longer about just keep the mind on the breath and keep going back. I mean, literally, it was bam, 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 bam. And once I got over the, the initial annoyance at the guard for, 
for doing that because, of course, he was just trying to help and doing what he'd been hired to do, which was keep the monkeys away. I realized and shifted the teaching and the meditation to the fact that in our lives, this is actually what happens with our mind. You've got the monkey nature. It bounces around. But it's still manageable. With a little bit of practice, with a little bit of attention, with a little bit of a meditation habit, we're absolutely able to find that stillness in between the monkeyness of the mind. It may not go away entirely, but it doesn't pull us out of being able to live in a state of peace, being able to live in a state of stillness, doesn't pull us out of being able to meditate when we close our eyes to meditate. But the minute that that guard starts banging, forget meditating, you can't even live peacefully. I mean, there was absolutely no possibility for anything other than just to wait for him to stop banging before you could do anything. And this is what happens in our own minds, actually. So the monkey, the monkey mind goes, we start jumping around, and then our inner chokidar, our inner guard, says, stop that, stop that, bad, bad, bad. You're distracted. You're doing what she said not to do. You're making shopping lists. You're thinking about dinner. You're, you're in the past. You're in the future. You're stupid. You can't meditate. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Whatever, whatever we may be saying, but that, that inner well-meaning, well-intentioned, but very, very destructive inner guard is actually the one who prevents us from being able to meditate. So, yes, we have monkeys in our mind. Okay. It's the nature of the mind. We meditate. We develop a practice of bringing the mind back, bringing the mind back. A practice of japa is very, very helpful here. It allows the mind to be focused on one thing, much like a puppy dog that's running around your house and you give it a little rubber toy or something and it's at least happy with that. So we give the mind one thing. We get it habituated. But what you don't do is start to yell at it. What you don't do is berate it. What you don't do is criticize it. What you don't do is channel that inner chokidar with his stick that's going to beat away all of the thoughts or beat away the fluctuations of the mind. This is the practice of yoga. You know, in, in yoga, it said that yoga is actually the stillness, the cessation of that constant fluctuation of the mind. But that happens not by beating the mind into submission. It happens actually by anchoring ourselves in the depths. If you look at the ocean, on the surface it's very wavy. But if you go deep, there's no waves. And so what ends up happening is, as we drop deep, we anchor ourselves in that which is still. So there may still be fluctuations on the surface, but it's not what we're anchored as. It's not what we are identified as. It's not where our focus and our attention is. And then as we practice more and more, the stillness and asana, as we practice more and more our pranayama, as we practice our withdrawal of the senses, as we practice our concentration, as we practice our meditation, ultimately we actually get to that state where the mind 
mostly becomes still. It may not be 100%. Yoga is a, a practice. We keep doing it. We keep practicing. But that's where it, it brings us that stillness. It also brings it to us because one of the things that tends to make the mind jump around is a lot of desires, a lot of fears. Oh, wow, that looks great. I wish I had that. Oh, I wish I would like that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, what about this? Oh, God, this person did that. That made me angry. Oh, I should have done that yesterday. Oh, my God, I can't believe I was so stupid and forgot that. Or, oh, tomorrow, I'm going to have this. That's going to be really fun. So that's, that's one pattern of what our mind does. And actually, when we get anchored in spiritually, we find that we're drawn, that our attention is drawn much less by the things of the world. That we're, we're much less impacted, attention-wise by what someone else is saying or doing or what they're wearing or how they're looking at us or what I mean just the things that tend to distract a lot of us stop distracting us when we really get ourselves anchored in a practice of yoga and so that's another way that they help bring about stillness is I'm no longer yearning after something. I'm no longer wanting something. I'm no longer wishing for something. I'm no longer regretting the past or yearning for the future or f fearful of the future. I'm able to just be here now where actually there's, there's stillness or at least an opportunity for stillness. We can't, we can't have that stillness in the future or in the past. We can only have it if we're here. And so we have to keep bringing ourselves back to the present. That's where all of the, the spiritual teachings and traditions always emphasize being in the present, being in the now. Because that is where I can experience joy. It's where I can experience peace. It's where I can experience stillness. There's nothing to worry about now. The worries are about the future or the past. So if I can be here, I've eliminated a large percentage, not all, but a large percentage of that which distracts me. So this is where we focus on the present. And slowly, slowly, slowly with practice it'll happen. People don't, people don't become expert pianists or basketball players or ice skaters or dancers overnight. We understand that the legs or the fingers or whatever it is that we're practicing, that they're, they need to be trained, they need to practice whether they're limbs or organs or muscles, they need to have practice. Same with the mind. It's habituated to being one way. It needs practice to be a different way. But it happens slowly, slowly, slowly. 